So to test the WP mail functionality, I need to trigger an email. So the easiest thing in this scenario, I'm gonna just use the send password reset. So that password reset has been sent to that user. Now that has been sent to student hyphen one and I have no idea whether that got through. So how do I test an email is triggered? You wanna ensure that the student gets the right email and the teacher gets the right email. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So today I'll be sharing an insight into the life of a WordPress developer, focusing on my approach to coding and problem solving. Now specifically, this video will be about using the WP Mail filter hook. So let's dive in. Now I've developed various websites over the years involving extending plugins like WooCommerce or working with third-party plugins and even creating my own custom solutions. Now these websites often get developed with different user roles like shop owner, customer, vendor, etc. So managing email triggers for different roles or users can become a little bit complicated. And that's where I find the WP Mail filter hook really useful. So when users engage with a website through form submission like creating orders or generating invoices or indeed submitting contact forms, the the ability to switch between users and triggering different submissions is crucial when testing or creating new features. Now, without altering the user's email address, it becomes impossible to know if the correct email was actually triggered or even delivered. So how can we test for this without creating unnecessary test users or running scripts to alter email addresses in the database? Now, because I like to use a local testing environment, after pulling a database from a production environment, the last thing I want to do is actually start messing with that data. I just want to use the data as it comes so I can replicate any live production environment. So to achieve this, I create a constant in my WP config file then in my custom plugin work I incorporate a conditional to check if that constant exists or if it's set to a particular value if it is then I can execute a specific function or actions in my plugin which enables me to modify the destination email for testing purposes so the benefit of this method means that I can have different configurations depending on my environment whether it's local staging or production and in your production environment you really want to be sending to real users but in your local or staging you don't want to be sending to your real users. If you start sending test emails for invoices or orders, it's just going to confuse them and you don't want to do that. So let me demonstrate this process in two different ways. First, I'll show you a method I used to use before WordPress 5.5. I still, in fact, do use this method because it is still useful for changing API settings. Then I'll introduce a more flexible and modern approach that involves utilizing core WordPress functionality using a function called WP get environment type. Now I'm a stickler for using or for developing with WordPress the WordPress way. So if there's a function in core and it's available, I'll use it. They've already done all the hard work, so there's no point in me trying to reinvent the wheel. So let's dive into this demonstration. I've got a simple site set up here and I've got a script that I'm, I'm going to run, which is going to set up my site. So in my script, it's full of WP CLI commands. If you're not familiar with this kind of way of working, I'll leave a link to a previous video that I've done, which is a practical guide to using WP CLI. Basically what this is doing, if I run this script, is it's going to download the core WordPress files, I'm going to set up a configuration file, create my database, go through the install process, setting up the admin email address and URL. Um, I'm scaffolding a plugin, which is what I would generally do with my custom development anyway. And this is purely to test the email, but this would generally include this functionality as well as all of the other custom stuff. Also at the end of that, I'm activating it immediately. So it's creating the plugin. It's also going to activate it. I'm also just removing some stuff I don't need. So the hello Dolly plugin and a couple of themes. I'm then creating a couple of roles, one for a teacher, one for a student. I'm also adding capability to those roles. And then I'm also then generating five random users using different unique email address and username and then running something called valet secure which will actually create my site with a, an ssl certificate so to run this script all i need to do is to type shell or sh wp install sh which is the name of the file so that's going to run through download create my config my database, delete a few things, delete some themes, and then set up my roles, capabilities, and set up my users. And those are all the passwords for those users. Now, because this is setting up an SSL, it needs my password for my Mac. When you secure a valet site, it needs to restart the, the local server. So that's all that's doing. So that's saying now that my test site is set up, 
with an SSL. So if I pop to a browser to access the site, there'll be a mail test. So there's my site. So everything seems to have worked. So if I log in now to wp-admin, first I'm gonna check to see my plugin has been created and it's activated, which is good. And I'm gonna check the users have been created. Yep, all the users are there. So I've got five students, I've got five teachers. Right, so to test the WP mail functionality, I need to trigger an email. So the easiest thing in this scenario, I'm gonna just use the send password reset. So that password reset has been sent to that user. Now that has been sent to student-1 and I have no idea whether that got through, but I'm assuming it did. So how do I test an, an email is triggered? You wanna ensure that the student gets the right email and the teacher gets the right email. So the, what we're looking at is the WP mail function. We go back to our WordPress installation. What I wanna do is search for a function which is a WordPress call function called WP underscore mail. So search is quite easy in VS Code. So I'm looking for something called function WP underscore mail. So we can find the, the function there is in a file called pluggable.php, which makes sense. And it's in the WP includes folder. So if we open that function up and just see what's going on, and we can see that this function takes a couple of parameters, which is two, which is the recipient, um, the subject, which is the subject of the email, the message content of the email, and you've got an optional headers and attachments. Now, if we go further down, we can see that we've got a filter and it's called WP underscore mail. It's gonna send back a variable, which is called ats, which I guess is short for attributes. And this filter only, only has one parameter. We need to know, know that um, when we create our own action hooks or filter hooks. So that's the, the filter that we need to use. So all we need to do is to set this up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this file open so we can refer back to it. And I'm gonna go to my plugin, which is gonna be in the content and plugins and WP mail test. So I'm gonna load that core file. So we see that there's nothing in there. This is just the, the basic scaffolded file for the plugin. I'm gonna go to my WP config and I wanna create a definition or a constant. So I'm gonna scroll down to this bit here where it says, that's it, stop editing. And I'm just gonna add in my, my define. So I'm gonna to go to my notes, copy this out, and paste it in, I'll tell you what's going on. So I'm basically defining a, a constant here called wp underscore local underscore mail, and I'm setting a Boolean to true. Now this parameter here could be an array with lots of different data, but I'm just setting this to true at the moment. So if I save that, now go back to my plugin. So the first thing I would do in my plugin is to just do a little bit of security and I'm just gonna copy this from my notes. So I've put in something here called, a constant called WP Inc, which is basically the directory to the WP includes file. So when WordPress loads, it needs to load the includes file because it's got all of the hidden files that need to be loaded in order for WordPress to function as it does. Now, if it's not defined, it's just gonna die. Now, all this does is basically means that if somebody tries to access this file directly in a browser by going to WB Content Plugins, my plugin folder, and then tries to load the plugin, this will just basically fail, it will just die. If I didn't put anything like this in, or some other kind of security check, it would um, it would load all of the code, and you may have something in that code that you don't want them to see. So it's just a little bit of a security fallback. So the next thing I need to do is to create my filter. I'm just gonna copy from my notes here, and I'll tell you what's going on. So this is my filter. I'm adding a filter called, um, and I'm hooking it onto the WP underscore mail hook, and my callback function is called local mail custom callback. I'm setting a priority of 10, which basically means it will be the 10th in the priority list. So if there are multiple functions fired on this mail hook, they could be fired at one, two, three, anywhere between one and 10 generally with WordPress. But the higher this goes, the the further down the chain it will fire. Now you could set this to 999, so you ensure that it's fired last. But I think in this case, I can just leave it as 10 because I've got nothing else installed. So we know that the, the mail passes one variable, so you need to pass one. If it, if it passed multiple, you'd need to add those in here. If And that has to be the exact number, otherwise things start to go wrong with WordPress. So we can see in our pluggable, we've got the mail hook and it passes only one parameter. Now generally with filters, what gets returned to this variable is only the first parameter. If there were multiple parameters, they may be used for like passing user data or product data. They don't get returned from the filter. It's only the first parameter. So that's that's an important thing to be clear about. What remains for me to do now is to actually create this function. So I'm just gonna copy these this out of my notes again. This is my function, again, called local mail custom callback. And 
it's passing the ats and it's only the one again if this if there were two i'd have to pass two variables here this basically is it's going to send the attributes through this filter or this function via the filter and then it's going to return them so what i'm doing here is i'm checking my constant and if it's defined as true which has been set in my config file so this would define as true therefore it returns as true then this is going to fire if this wasn't set up in my local environment or it isn't set up on my production environment then this is going to this is just going to get skipped filtered attributes are just going to be returned as they were passed in but because this is true the attributes um, are going to be changed by my condition so here what i'm doing is i'm actually taking the original email that it was sent to and i'm assigning it to a different variable because i want to use that later on and then i'm changing the to attribute to my email address and that will that will physically change that and get returned in the final return of this function the other thing i'm changing is the subject so again if we look at our pluggable the function actually takes a to a subject a message a headers and attachments so i'm changing these two parameters so the subject i'm i'm actually prepending it with something that's quite obvious to me and i often do this so i can see that it is actually a test and it's not from the live or production environment so i'm passing the original subject attribute but i'm actually assigning it before that happens so this is something called concatenation and basically concatenation means that you can join a string together so i'm prepending it with test and then i'm putting some quotation marks to surround the subject and then I'm saying what email it was to. So it's going to say test, what the subject was, to, and the original email address. All of those attributes are going to get returned. So technically, with all of this set up in, in place, I should be able to test this. So if I go back to my site, I should be able to send a, a password reset, and it should trigger an email. With everything set up now, it won't go to student1. It should go to my email address that was set up in, that, in the function. So if I go to my email, and I need to refresh this, and there you have it. This is doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Again, we can prove that this is working because I've got a really funky setup for my local environment. I can set up debugging on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just activate debugging through xdebug. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to break at this point here. So I'm going to go back to my site, run that function again, and just to show you what's happening, it should break at that point. So that it does. So what's happened here is I'm breaking at this point because I've got xdebug active and on this hook, it's being my function's being fired. It's passing my attributes. If I just close all this down, we can actually look at those attributes. So the original attributes that come through, because we've not changed anything yet, um, it's saying that the two is set to student one, which is what we'd expect. The subject is um, what the site is called, which is WP Mail hooks, and it was a password reset. So now when we go through our constant to check that, we just jump over that because this is true it's then jumping into our condition so now we're in the realms of changing the ats um, variable so the first thing we do is we, we assign a new variable which is set defined here but it's not been initialized yet so now it's initialized we've got the original email address and then we're going to change the two attributes which is currently set to student one and now it's set to an array and it's my email address. Now I usually set this up as an array because if at any point I want to add any more email addresses to that, I can. Um, if I want to send something to a client or if there's many people involved, I can actually split that out and include other email addresses. So that's why I set it as an array. But the two attribute can be either a string or an array. So then we just change the attribute subject and there it's changed. You can see it changed there. And then let that fire. And then go back to my email and again we should say a new email which is that one right there so that works and that's what exactly what I wanted it to do now that's one way of doing it and that was the old way that I used to do it so there is another way using the new functionality that was provided in WordPress 5.5 what I need to do here is to just change the act the, the constant that's defined now with 5.5, the definitional constant was something called WP environment type. And rather than be a Boolean, this is actually set as a string. So this can be local, or it could be staging, or it could be production. Now obviously on every server you would have, so you may have a subdomain or a directory that has a staging site, which is what you use for testing, and it has its own WP config file. So you can set this um, environment type specifically for that environment 
or for that server. So because I'm on local, I'm just gonna put that back to local because this is my local environment. Um, but again, on my production, I would have that set to production and I can make it do different things depending on what this constant has been set to. So if I go back to my plugin, I now want to add in a, a similar thing to what we did the first time around, but we, it's slightly different. So again, I'm adding my own filter, hooking onto the WP mail hook, and I'm running my own callback, again, priority 10 with one parameter passed. So now I need to create the call mail custom callback function. So I go to my notes, I'm just gonna copy and paste that in. Now you can see that I'm doing something slightly different here and I'm calling the call function called WP underscore get environment type. And I'm using a switch case to check what that is. So this is gonna run um, a check to see if this is, exists. If it's true, it's then gonna check what that case is. And because it's set to local, it's then gonna run this function here, which we haven't actually set up yet, but I'm gonna do that in a minute. So again, this could be, and obviously if none of this is met as true, then there's gonna be a default and the default will run the production. But in here you can have one called staging. And again, you could set up a different function purely for the staging. That would do something different basically. So let's create this function now. Again, because this requires the ats parameter as a, a variable, that's gonna be sent to this function. And then it's I'm, I'm also sending it to this function and returning it as a, as a variable as well. So that's quite important. Pass these variables, you need to pass them back. Now I'm gonna create my local mail custom function. If I go to my notes, I'm just gonna copy that. So now, rather than them checking what we did before, when I set my own constant, I don't need to do that this time because it's already been checked up here in my first function. So with the attributes I'm doing, similar to the way I did it before, I'm just setting the original email, then I'm changing the to, then I'm changing the subject to include the subject, but I'm prepending it and appending it with who that email was to, and then I'm returning that. So that'll be returned back to this function and therefore returned into my mail function. So again, I can test this, uh, but the only thing I haven't done is set up this function. But I don't think I need to do that just yet because this is never gonna get met, so it shouldn't fail. We can just test that. So if I go to my, go back to my browser and this time, rather than send it to a student, was it a student? Yeah, I'm gonna send it to a teacher. So I reset teacher one. Now if I go back to my browser, check my email. Oh, there we go. So that now has been sent to teacher one. And again, we can, just confirm that is working by sending it to a different teacher. So we send it to teacher five, back to my email, and now we have two emails. So that's doing what we expected it to do, and it's that's two ways that you can you can run that function. So the first way is the the old way that I used to do it with the by defining my own constant in the WP config file and now which is my preferred way is to use the WP environment type and setting it in different environments on different servers. So in conclusion, uh, defining the constant in your WP config file proves how powerful not only it is just for testing email, but you can also manage um, different types of environment, like I said, but you also may want to set up different API calls, for instance. So on a staging environment, if you've got something like a PayPal, you might want to have your sandbox on your staging and your local environment, but in your production, you want to have your actual live PayPal credentials. So those are the kind of uh, things that I would do. Well, that's my approach and hopefully it inspires you. If you have any different ways, then feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I'd love to know how you do it. But as always, if you found this useful, do give it a thumbs up. Um, or if you have any questions, again, leave them in comments. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.